evening and welcome to iWar. Let's play iWar. And today we're doing advanced navigation. This exam will establish your ability to control a dreadnought class corvette using autopilots, the ship's linear displacement drive, LDS, and capsule drive. This is just basically going to be follow the leader, really. During the flight, you will be accompanied by an instructor pilot in another corvette. You should listen to his spoken instructions and you should follow them to the letter. On completing the course, your instructor pilot will score your performance. Right. So we are docked at Salt Lake. Oh, sorry. So let's undock. Nice little animation there. Good. Now I want you to select my ship as the nav target by using the select target function. Let's find you. Where are you? Where are you? Gotcha. Now I am now your selected nav target. So don't oh, oh, we're tempting though. With my ship selected, you can now use autopilot. Ah, through to navigation view. Probably the best for this one. So now we start using autopilots, which is one of the keys to success in Iowa. And there's our fellow instructor quite happily. Good. Now, now try the autopilot. Explaining the difference between all the different autopilots. So the first one is approach, which should come close. Formate. That uh, that's formation flying for dummies, to be honest. And to be honest, one of the most underrated and useful autopilots there is. I will now halt. And I want you to engage the dock autopilot. Right. You always press escape to get out of an autopilot and go back into free thruster mode. And then you have the dock autopilot, which is fantastic because every time you dock you get one of these direct to cut views which are just shows off what the game was capable of. Now, now this was 1999 when they had came out with this. 3D FX was still pretty uh, the cutting edge graphics card you could get. So 600 by 800 was, you know, the best resolution. Ah, now welcome to the first educational point of this game. Before playing this game, I never knew about Lagrange points. Lagrange points are areas of null gravity. And that is where they have decided to place all their jump points. As a capsule drive, or a jump drive in this game, will only work at a Lagrange point. For those of you who don't know, a Lagrange point is uh, a place where the gravitational fields of two orbital bodies have cancelled each other out. So at that particular point, between the Earth and the Moon for instance, there's no gravity at that point. Another thing that uh, you might notice is that in certain navigation modes you have this massive cone with a blue end and a red end. The idea being is that you always fly through the blue cone and out of the red cone. That's to stop accidents happening. So what we're going to do is we're just waiting on the instructor. Here's him spinning ahead of us. In he goes. And jump away. Right, our turn. Welcome to Jump Space Iowa style. And here we are at Jupiter. Alright, let's use the LDS system to move it into planetary speed. You should try and follow my lead around Ganymede and Europa. I am gauging LDS now. No. LDS. LDS is I was fast travel system. You have um, 
jump drives from getting from system to system or jump point to jump point but for fast maneuvering around the system you have LDS which is, stands for Linear Displacement System I really do like the anachronisms on this one uh, and apparently it moves the ship up to a third of the speed of light now those of you who are astronomically minded know that that will still mean that it will take absolutely ages from get from point A to point B in this game uh, you know from to get from one moon to another even at a third of speed of light will take a lot longer than just a couple of minutes so what they do is they also do a time compression uh, which you can see just in the kind of middle right of the screen so basically if in the old simulators days like submarine simulators they used to have a time compression which you would just hide away behind some rocks and just switch on the time compression and everything would happen a lot faster and so when you were in position you could just switch off the time position uh, the, the time acceleration and just follow through on your attack but they seem to have picked this up for uh, from some marine simulators here which is actually quite similar to uh, how this game is based on to be honest fast submarines in space maybe so we're taking a tour of some of the Jupiter moons at the moment um, you got two approaches to this mission you can either fly to each waypoint manually the more difficult one. Oh, and you do have this which is the full screen view um, I think iWar was one of the first space sims to actually put in a full screen view um, obviously it takes away from the immersion which is a horrible phrase in the uh, that everybody has been saying in Elite Dangerous lately uh, but oh, there's the engineering screen so we're coming up on Europa now you can see that the time acceleration is is running at double time and according to this we're doing 6,000 um, was it 6,000 kilometers a second or meters a second I think it's kilometers a second I mean, just to take you through the HUD on this one, you have your contact list in the centre, your autopilots down to the bottom left, and of course your orb, which is your navigational aid, showing uh, you where everything is in the in the right. Now, as you can imagine, interpreting all this kind of stuff, it does take quite a while to, to get your head round, which is why the manual was incredibly thick and most of the time you had this you spent a lot of time reading through the manual pouring through the, da the data and the notes and yet there's, there's Jupiter in the background and you can even see it's got the red spot now at the time this game was made we didn't have the astronomical knowledge that we do now so uh, but what they did do was they did uh, I think model uh, maybe as much as 20 to 30 light years out from Earth so the stars that you can travel to in this game do exist um, if you want to compare it to modern games like Elite Dangerous which is my favorite game at the moment uh, you know they've managed to model it out to I think um, 3000 light years that's accurately and then the rest of it is procedurally generated which is a phenomenal achievement and if you ever have a chance to just look at the galaxy map in Elite Dangerous, it, it certainly makes your draw dro jaw drop. But back to Eyewall. Now, the other thing that I'll point out is you'll see that kind of triangle thing in the in the middle. That triangle thing is your power distribution. You can assign more power to your engines, so you're more maneuverable, more power to your shields, and of course more power to your guns, just by moving that triangle about. Uh, it's a very, very, si it's a very, very uh, flexible system once you get going with it. 
So yeah, we're just taking round the round Jupiter and uh, quick trip home, and that's us done. Uh, there goes the instructor again. So we'll just follow him in quickly. Yeah, the orb, the orb works in a similar matter to the uh, in manner to the elite scanner, except it's in three dimensions. Um, oh, sod it! We'll just go straight past him. Bang! And there's us emerging. Yeah, we are in the centre of the orb. That's the uh, your ship is in the centre of the orb. Uh, with you within one kilometre, you are on the inside of the of uh, the orb and you'll have uh, basically what looks like a golf stick showing the position of your contact within within that one kilometre or is it five kilometres? I can't remember without the manual and if uh, they are greater, like you can see now then the, the golf stick is on the outside of the globe so you've got a kind of idea, a quick gauge of uh, how far away some items are and a quick dock uh, quick dock, right, long dock then. Even longer dock. Just let the autopilot do the hard work. Clink. And we're done. Right. So that's it. Next time, nav docking.